I've got to say, my first 4th of July in Kansas was a whole new experience for me. I mean, don't get me wrong. We have 4th of July in California, but we've been in a drought there for a very long time. So the list of legal fireworks that we can actually set off is super short. And last year, they weren't even allowed to set off fireworks. Now, meanwhile, in Kansas, I got to set off the ones that shoot up into the air and then burst in the sky. And like, I was having a blast. I was having a blast. I had never seen one of those fireworks go off legally. I mean, I didn't even know that they were sold outside of the black market. Now, still on the topic of fireworks, but on a smaller scale, probably more like the ones we saw in California. Do you remember those little tiny black pellets that fire up into long snakes? Have you ever wondered just how those fireworks actually work? Well, today we are going to make our own version of that firework, except much bigger, using sugar and baking soda. So after you've gone ahead and gathered your materials, and I had to get a little bit creative on the sand because my sand for experiments is back in the classroom, but I went to the alley just behind my house and got some of the sand from there and put it into a dish. Once you've got all that though, you're going to take a teaspoon of baking soda and four teaspoons of powdered sugar. I have never tried this with regular sugar. I would imagine it works all right, but I think the powdered sugar is really going to give you the best carbon snake. Once you've got that, go ahead and get it stirred up. Oh, flying everywhere. All right. So we want to take this and make kind of a mound in the middle of our pie tin or glass dish, whatever you concoct it there. And you're going to make just a hole right in the middle of it. And that's where you're powdered sugar and baking soda mixture is going to go. All right, now very next thing we need to do, and this is where stuff starts getting exciting, we are actually going to soak this sand mixture in lighter fluid. Once you've got that nice and damp, go ahead and I'm going to spoon that powdered mixture right into the middle of it. it kind of looks like a volcano almost. All right, I'm taking this outside because it is going to smell like nobody's business if I leave this inside. So go ahead and make sure you're out in a well-ventilated area. Just like we took all kinds of safety precautions when we were lighting our Bunsen burners, you've got to make sure that you are careful when we are conducting experiments that involve fire. So be sure to only light the sand on a safe, fireproof surface in a well-ventilated area. And keep water nearby just in case something gets out of hand. Remember to tie back your long hair and never leave flames unattended or without adult supervision. Hey, get out of that. And once you are out into your well-ventilated area, go ahead and carefully light the sand near the sugar mixture. You're going to want to make sure that you have an adult supervising you on that.
I would just like to say, at the end of this, I think mine ended up looking a little more like a carbon octopus than a carbon snake, but you go ahead and try it, see what you can get. This is way cool, but you're probably wondering, what happens? Like, why does this even work? Three chemical reactions work together to cause your carbon sugar snake to grow. All of these reactions are dependent on heat, hence the lighter fluid soaked sand. The first reaction occurs as your sugar mixture burns in the presence of oxygen. Sugar and oxygen react to produce carbon dioxide gas and water vapor. These gases work together to push the sugar mixture upwards. The second reaction occurs as additional sugar, which is still being heated, but is trapped underneath the top layer, starts to decompose into solid carbon and water vapor. We call this thermal decomposition because heat is causing the sugar and baking soda to break down into more basic compounds. The solid carbon helps to make the black snake you see growing and solidifying as it cools. The third reaction you see is the baking soda undergoing thermal decomposition, where it also breaks down, but into solid sodium carbonate, carbon dioxide gas, and water vapor. That solid sodium carbonate also helps to make up the snake. You do need to make sure that you're cleaned up from this lab, but before you do that, I want you to take a couple minutes and just play with that carbon snake. See what you can do with it. I'm going to hop off of here and go play with my own snake so that you guys can mess with yours. But have so much fun, and I'll look forward to seeing you all next time. Love you guys.